Hi there, in this video, I wanna share with you how I edit and prepare my field recordings to use as sound effects, whether uh, as layers or just as is. So recently, I was able to take some time off and my family and I went um, away to a family friend's farm to watch the farm for a week. And during that time, I was able to get uh, a lot of really cool different uh, field recordings from the farm. So I was able to get like animal sounds and ambiences as well as like different one shots from the farm. So my thought for this video was that I would share with you those recordings and show you how, how I'm gonna prepare them and edit them so that they are ready to use just as uh, in my projects or just as future uh, layers for sound design. So with that said, let's get right into it. All right, so there's kind of three different recordings that I wanna kind of walk you through. One's gonna be our one shots, the other one's gonna be recordings, and the other one's gonna be loud sources. And I'm gonna kind of approach them a little bit differently. But um, yeah, so here we're gonna start with just one shots. And um, yeah, so the first thing that I do is I just import my all of my sound files from my recording right into RX. And the reason I do that is because the first thing I wanna do is I wanna basically be able to see um, my, my spectrogram, see if there's any kind of issues with the files. And also this way I can start editing kind of uh, a lot quicker and easier. So uh, that's what I did here. Here you can see I have um, tracks one and two. This is a stereo recording. I have two different microphones. This is my Loam UC Pros. And then here I have another pair of microphones and these are my EM258s. Now these are both the exact same recording. So if I wanna hear them together, I can combine the view together and hear what they sound together. But just for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start with uh, one pair here and then I'll, I'll do the same processing on the other pair. Uh, but uh, yeah, for now, I'm just gonna show you how I do it on the first one and then uh, we'll go from there. So um, here I have a recording. Uh, this was in the evening. So you'll, you'll hear there's a bit of like background ambience. Uh, and what I was doing is I was near the uh, pigs uh, kind of area and the pigs were outdoors. They had a, a water feeding like barrel, if you will, and it was empty. Uh, so what I was doing is I was kind of like rocking it a little bit and hitting it a bit, so, and I was getting this cool sound. So here we go. Let's have a listen to what it is. All right, so there's some cool like wood hits, and then you have this cool like really uh, resonant like metal sound. So. Uh, these are pretty good. Uh, my issue with these recordings though now is that there's a lot of background ambience. So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna see if I can remove any of that. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna grab like this section here where there's a bunch of silence that I've already had. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some spectral denoise. So I have it right here. I'm just gonna learn this section here. So this is kind of the spectrogram for this, this, air, this background noise that I wanna remove. And now I'm just gonna remove it from the rest of the recording. All right, so it's, it tried to remove some of it if we have a listen now. It's definitely a lot less. If we go back to our hits here, you still hear some, but I think it's a bit better. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is I just wanna make sure I have everything normalized just so I get the maximum volume out of my sounds. And then um, also because I was using 32-bit, the noise floor should still stay super low. And what I like to do for sounds like this that are like really uh, transient heavy, like you can see here, there's a lot of transients and they're kind of clicky. Um, is I'm just gonna add some light compression. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna compress them just a little bit. I don't wanna smash them or squash them. It's just to basically uh, get rid of that the, the transients a little bit. There you go. So it, it really wasn't very much. And now if we have a listen. There you go. So I don't know if these recordings are gonna be able, if I'm gonna be able to use them. I'm gonna see if I can try to get rid of some of these frogs. I think it's right here. Yeah, it sounds like it's coming from here. So let's see if I can do some spectral repair and get rid of some of these frogs here. All right, so to me, that's a bit better. Now what I'm gonna do is I like to combine my view here just to make sure that I make, uh, I'm just gonna cut out the beginning and the end just to save on file space. And I just wanna make sure that I'm cutting at the exact same space for both of these files because they are the same things, just different microphones. And I like to always do like a fade at the beginning and at the end, just like that. And now uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna export this now uh, back into the same folder on my recorder where it was. And I'm just gonna mark it that it was already edited. So normalized and edited. And after that, we'll go into Reaper to do some more edits. All right, so I've edited both of the files uh, both of the different microphones uh, sets that I had uh, with a very similar processing that I just imported into Reaper here on just on a, on a blank document. And what I want to do now is uh, listen to how they play together and, and also we'll see if we can match them together. If not, that's totally fine. I'm going to probably export them separately, but for now, let's just see what they sound like. So 
So they kind of sound good together, except that I think there's kind of like some frequency masking. So I don't know that I want to keep them uh, together like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the best takes that I have here, and I'm just going to start chopping them up. So I'm just going to cut around these here. Normally, I just cut right at the beginning of these parts that I want here, just like that. And now if there's uh, one that's like way too long that I know I'm not going to use, I can just cut that out. Same thing with these here. Just bring them in a little bit. Same thing with this guy. Okay, so now that I have these kind of like this, again, it's very rough. It's not, I'm not trying to do a really hard, uh, perfect uh, edit right now because what I'm actually going to do is I want to bring these back into our X to tweak them further and then we'll go from there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to grab these. So I'm just going to export them using the region render. All right, so here we go. I imported all the files back into here. And what I like to do here is I like to edit them individually inside of RX just because I feel like I have more uh, control over them and I can just kind of see everything a little bit better, if, especially if I need to do further editing. So here what I'm going to do is I'm just, I want to make sure I have a fade in at the beginning. And I probably don't need all this massive tail, so I'm just going to delete this and then just do a big fade out. And if I wanted to, I could probably do it even, even sharper. Just like that. So I'm going to do that for each of these and then I can export them out and then they'll pretty much be ready and um, done. All right, let's move on to our next recording and these are going to be ambiences. So here again, you'll see right into our RX, I have my track one and two, which is going to be my low music pros. I also have my EM258s, which I have here. And right now I'm looking at just the spectrogram, but if I put it on the waveform as well, this is what it looks like. And I forgot to show this last time, but when I put in my stuff, sometimes it just looks like this where the uh, recording... Uh, volume was really, really soft. And uh, because I'm recording in 32-bit, that's not like a big issue because I can just boost it back up uh, once I'm in post. So that, the first thing I normally do is I'll just normalize everything and the noise floor should still stay pretty much uh, pretty quiet and uh, just still look, uh, sound pretty good. So this is what it looks like. So I'm just going to start working on here with the EM258s here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I, I like to go straight to the spectrogram when I'm doing like ambiences because most of the time, because you have like constant sound throughout the entire file, you won't necessarily see uh, where the issues are. Uh, so I like to just look at the spectrogram and here I can already see here that I have some sound right up here and I have a more right up here. So there's probably something happening here and I might have some stuff up here. Maybe that's an animal or something. I'm not sure. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to have a listen to these uh, couple of sections here and see if there's any issues with them. <laughs> All right, so for these sections here, it's actually like really, really high pitch. So you can't actually he really hear it. So it doesn't sound like anything that's in the recording. Um, a few issues that I do hear, though, that I'm going to want to fix is um, the first thing is is going to be the bass. So I didn't put a low pass filter when I was recording this ambience, and I probably perhaps should have. That's the first thing. So there's a lot of bass in here. And I could either – sometimes I'll, I'll do an EQ in here um, right away where I can just preview it and see what it sounds like. But – I think I'm going to do it inside of Reaper because I want to do a different EQ curve. So I think for now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fix up the opening, the beginning here because I have some probably talking or, or movement when I was walking away from the recorder. Yeah, so I'm just going to add like maybe a fade in here or just cut out that, that beginning part and then add more of a fade here so we don't hear that. And same thing at the end here. So with that done like that, I could, probably could boost the volume up a little bit more, but honestly, it, it doesn't really need it. Uh, it'd be way too much. So right now I have it around negative uh, 25 LUFS integrated, and I think that's okay for now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the same thing for this second set of microphones here. I'm going to undo the fade and the cuts because I want to make sure I do the same thing for both of them. But I'm going to do the same processing. We'll go back into, uh, I'm going to export them and then back into Reaper to do some final uh, small edits for this one. All right, so these have been edited out, and here they are. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a listen to these. And I'm probably going to want to uh, add some EQ, like I said, just to tweak it a little bit, especially if there's some sort of like um, resonant frequencies, especially in the low low end. I might have some dynamic EQ that I'm going to add here. So let's just have a listen. So right here sounds like actually a, an airplane is flying by. And here like a car. So I'm going to actually cut it here. And the plane sounds like it starts about here. So I'm going to cut this entire section out. Now, I could probably keep it, but just to make this uh, ambience really usable, I'm going to cut all of that out. And I'm going to bring this in like this. And let's just have a listen to see how it crossfades together now. Mm. 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 
Great, so that's pretty good to me. Um, I hear a lot of bass in there, which uh, you really don't need to have. Or, yeah, it just doesn't sound good for ambiences. So I'm just gonna cut that out right now, and we'll see what we can see what it sounds like. And to me, right away, that sounds infinitely better. So I'm going to do the same thing here for this one because this one should also have probably a lot of bass. So let's have a listen. And there you go. So I just kind of listened to the file really quickly here, and I already noticed I didn't uh, fade out the ending very well here. So I'm just going to bring that in here, and I'm just going to add uh, a little fade here at the end. Perfect. So now with this done, I could export this like this and that could work. And I could also, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just make a loop with it right away because it's an ambience. Uh, maybe I want to loop it. Uh, if I did, I would probably like glue all of this together just to make sure that it's all one file and then I cut in the middle and then make an, uh, a, um, a loop from that uh, just to make sure that both of the files are the same and then I can go from there. But I think for now, I'm just going to export this as is, same as before. So I'm going to do that and then we'll come back. All right, so let's talk about our last uh, sound sources here that we're going to be uh, uh, editing and this is going to be... Um, the, the louder sound sources. So this was actually a four wheeler that I was uh, driving to go and feed uh, some of the animals. So here it is right here. And what I'm going to do again to start is uh, I'm just going to normalize it here just like that. Same thing with this one here. We'll just normalize it. And you can see here, uh, I didn't show this in the other recordings, but I usually talk at the beginning of the recording just to say what, I, what I'm what i doing, what time of day it is, or maybe even what microphones I'm using if it's not my regular setup. But yeah, so uh, here I'm pretty sure I just say like, I'm going to feed the pigs. I'm going to hop in the four wheeler. Driving to feed the pigs on Tuesday morning. So there you go. So driving to feed the pigs on Tuesday morning. Um, and and uh, yeah, so I already have kind of the engine going here for the four wheeler and I hop on. That was the four wheeler exhaust, the black four wheeler. Okay, and actually I talk again here. I, I was just saying that how this was actually the exhaust. So this was the back of the four wheeler. So I have one recording set here and then I have another recording set here when I was probably like driving to see the pigs here, so. All right, so what I do now is I normally like, I'll, I'll just cut out my talking here just because I just don't need it. And I already know uh, what it is. So I don't mind getting this nice fade in here. And then here at the end, right. I'm talking how I, I, I just, I arrived at the pigs here. So uh, um, there you go. So I'm just going to cut that out again. I don't need that. Yeah, so I can keep that for now. Won't need it. And this middle section of me talking, I'm going to leave it. Yeah, I'm going to leave it in there for now just because I, I want to make sure I cut it properly. So these are going to be like two separate recordings. I'm going to have like one here of just the exhaust and then one of just me driving. So I'm going to have two separate files. So for that, so now I'm just going to export these. Then I'll bring it into Reaper. All right, so here are the recordings. And like I said before, I want to have two separate ones. So I'm just going to cut out the where I start talking here. That was the... So right around there. Here we go. And there. So just cut those out here. And then I'm just going to have a nice little fade in around here probably for these guys. So I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And then later, if I ever want to use this as a loop or whatever, I can always cut it at the beginning and the end and then make a loop out of that. But for now, this is good. So I'm going to keep it like that. This one, I'm just going to edit a little bit here. All right, so there you go. Those two are ready. So now I can just export those and then they should be good to go. All right, so I hope you found that useful and valuable and just seeing my process from uh, raw recordings to editing them and preparing them for uh, sound effects and future projects. So if you like this video and you're a sound designer, I think there's another video that you're gonna like. It's my uh, six Reaper scripts that I use to create sound effects. So there's six different ones that I use inside of Reaper that really have he helped improve my workflow and just made my life a little, whole lot easier. So if you are interested in seeing that, I'll make sure I have it in the video somewhere here or in the cards above. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. I always do my best to answer them. Thanks so much for watching all the way through to the end. I'll see you in the next video.